We all know ex-UFC fighters tend to make headlines after leaving the organization, notably for joining other organizations, becoming mentors, or trying other sports and whatnot. But for Cain Velasquez, the reason is a bit grim. Curious to know more? Stay tuned as we unpack Velasquez's arrest and more. First up, Cain Velasquez arrested on suspicion of murder. Cain Velasquez, the retired UFC heavyweight champion, was arrested on charges of attempted murder on Monday and booked into the Santa Clara, California County Jail, according to the San Jose Police Department. As per online reports, Velasquez is being held without bail. The San Jose Police Department reported a shooting near the intersection of Monterey Highway and Bailey Avenue on Monday evening. According to police, one adult male was shot at least once and was taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Velasquez was identified as the shooter by police on Tuesday. San Jose Police shared on Twitter that motives surrounding this incident are still under investigation. Velasquez, 39, is a two-time UFC heavyweight champion, having held the title in 2010 and 2011, and again from 2012 to 2015. The California native is widely regarded as one of the greatest heavyweight fighters of all time. Velasquez stepped down from MMA in 2019 and has been mentoring at his old gym, American Kickboxing Academy in San Jose, since then. Following his time in the UFC, Velasquez pursued a career in professional wrestling, first in Mexico, where his parents were born, and then in WWE. He was announced by WWE at the start of the pandemic in 2020, but re-emerged in December for Mexican promotion AAA. According to sources, the plan seemed to be for him to wrestle more this year. Before we get into other news, let's look back at some of Kane's most iconic and memorable fights. Next, UFC 104 versus Ben Rothwell. Velasquez had six fights under his belt and was coming off his first judgment call victory over divisional heavyweight Chake Congo. This was the first time the former Arizona State wrestler had struggled, and many wondered if it was time to put a halt to the undefeated prospect's meteoric rise through the heavyweight ranks. Pairing him with Rothwell in the co-main event of UFC 104 in Los Angeles was supposed to be a litmus test for Velasquez, who entered the octagon with a 30-6 record, which included a leading run under the IFL banner and wins over recognized heavyweights like Roy Nelson and Rico Rodriguez. He had been a respected professional who was seen as a terse test for the promising upstart, and the outcome of the fight would have a major impact on how fast Velasquez progressed up the divisional ladder. Velasquez dropped Rothwell to the ground just after under 30 seconds into the fight, suffocating the veteran with his signature suffocating pace. When Rothwell well worked his way back to his feet, Velasquez would chuck him back to the floor, and when they stayed upright, it was the youngster who led the dance, taking the contest to the savvy, well-schooled veteran. It was a powerful performance from start to finish, having come just 58 seconds into the middle of this three-round contest. People questioned Velasquez's power and ability to put away more experienced rivals after he battered Congo but failed to finish him. Four months later, this blue-chip prospect plowed past Rothwell, demonstrating that he was ready to dive headfirst into the heavyweight talent pool. Now, UFC 121 versus Brock Lesnar. Some people struggle to understand how dangerous Brock Lesnar was in the octagon because they can't tell the difference between the professional wrestler and the UFC heavyweight. But make no mistake, Lesnar was, and still is, a great athlete with freakish physical prowess who took to the sport with absolutely staggering ease and speed. Lesnar entered UFC 121 as the incumbent UFC heavyweight champion, determined to defend his championship. Lesnar blasted out of the corner like a canyon, attempting to bring the battle to Velasquez and get him out of there before he could get into a routine. He charged at him, hoping to take him down and crush him early, but the challenger held his ground. When Lesnar dropped him to the ground, Velasquez rose immediately, and when they split into space with little over three minutes left in the round, the young phenom grabbed control. Lesnar was exhausted, unleashing sluggish single blows that Velasquez easily evaded and countered with combinations, allowing the challenger to close the distance and knock the champion out. When Velasquez shrugged off a fatigued Lesnar's takedown attempt, he was sent staggering across the cage off balance, only to meet face-to-face -face with a fresh, aggressive adversary when he regained his equilibrium along the fence. A knee up the middle put Lesnar to the canvas, and it was all over from there as Velasquez slipped past his legs, went into side control, and unloaded a barrage of attacks that forced the fight to be stopped. A new champion had arisen, and he appeared to be on his way to dominating the category for a long period of time. Next up, UFC 155 versus Junior Dos Santos. Junior Dos Santos took just over a minute to knock out Velasquez in their first fight, hitting him with a clubbing right hand behind the ear that knocked him out and made the Brazilian the new UFC heavyweight champion. He looked fantastic in successfully defending his championship against Frank Mir, the same night Velasquez battered Silva, and the mystery of what would happen when these two met for the second time in the octagon made it one of the most anticipated fights in quite some time. Velasquez started at a fast pace and was a touch too aggressive early on. As he marched forward, he was aiming for takedowns and left himself exposed 
exposed to counters, but after a few minutes of frantic activity, it was evident the champion was exhausted and the rival was just getting started. What started as a coin flip bout between two outstanding talents suddenly turned into a one-sided slaughter, with Velasquez maintaining his blistering pace and pounding Dos Santos, chipping away minute by minute, altering Dos Santos' complexion with a constant diet of short, punishing strikes. Velasquez knocked out the title holder late in the first round and never let up, never letting Sigano relax or launch any attack of his own. The fight went the distance, but the outcome was never in doubt after the opening three minutes. Velasquez crushed Dos Santos throughout the last 22 minutes of the bout to retake the championship title and even their personal series, reaffirming his position as the world's best heavyweight. Now, here is some other UFC news, including details about UFC 275 and Chris Levin's COVID bout. Now we have UFC 275 targets Valentina Shevchenko versus Talia Santos. UFC 275 will feature a women's flyweight championship fight. The fight between defending champion Valentina Shevchenko and number five rated contender Talia Santos is set to take place on the June 11th pay-per-view, according to MMA Fighting. Although no site has been announced, Ariel Helwani believes Singapore is the favorite. Shevchenko, 22-3, has made a half dozen title defenses since capturing the vacant championship from Joanna Jerzycic at UFC 231 in December 2018. She's barely been tested in all of her championship battles, with only Jennifer Maya taking a round off of her. Shevchenko's most recent fight was a knockout of Lauren Murphy at UFC 266 in September. Shevchenko smashed Jessica Andrade by second round TKO in her other outing in 2021 at UFC 261. Santos, 19 to 1, is on a winning streak after losing her UFC debut to Mara Romero Barella by split decision. After winning a unilateral decision over Molly McCann, Jillian Robertson, and Roxanne Modafferi, the Brazilian overpowered and beat Joanne Wood in the first round of their November UFC Vegas 43 fight. That victory awarded her performance of the night honors and, presumably, a title shot. The main event of UFC 275 will be a light heavyweight championship fight between defending champion Glover Teixeira and Jiri Prochaska. Lastly, Chris Levin's tough battle with COVID. One of the inaugural seasons of the Ultimate Fighter finalists has been battling a difficult battle against COVID-19. Chris Levin was hospitalized earlier this month after being diagnosed for the second time, and he even gave an interview. Although medics are optimistic about Levin's rehabilitation, the crippler understands that he still has a long way to go before he can feel normal again after being placed on a ventilator and afraid for his life. Levin shared some of the things that ran through his mind throughout the terrifying experience. He shared that it was horrifying to be fighting against such a thing and that he only got through his tough days because of his child. Levin feels like a recovery is conceivable now that he has been taken off of life support, which makes him thankful to be alive. However, Chris claims that the virus has already caused major damage to his lungs. Chris refused to share his vaccination status in the same interview, which only leads us to suspect that he's not vaccinated because if he were, he might not have been infected twice and dealt with such heavy symptoms. During his UFC career, Levin, 22-12, defeated noteworthy opponents such as Wanderlei Silva, Patrick Cote, and Yoshihiro Akiyama, among others. After leaving the UFC in 2013, the 41-year-old stopped competing in mixed martial arts. Chris, on the other hand, began participating in bare-knuckle boxing in 2018, where he collected a 4-1 record, with the most recent match being a KO win against Quentin Henry in February 2021. He proclaimed his retirement from combat sports after his triumph. That's all we have for you guys today. See you next time. Bye.